Okay, so we're live. Welcome to Good Morning Revolution. Uh, good morning, uh, everyone. Uh, uh, we're here with uh, Rosanna Cambron in uh, California and Scott Hiley in New York. And my name is Anita Waters. I'm in Ohio. And today, uh, Joe Sims and Michael are not with us. Um, they're taking the, the, this week off and we'll see them next Friday. Um, so uh, good morning, Revolution. Good morning, Revolution, Scott. Good morning, Revolution. Good, <laughs> good morning, morning. Uh, comrades as well. Good morning, Revolution, Rosanna. Good morning to all comrades. Good morning. Um, so Scott, you want to start us off with a uh, uh, yeah. So big Joe like question. <laughs> yeah, big news of the week. Um, Derek Chauvin is guilty, guilty, guilty of the murder of George Floyd. Um, so, uh, what what does this verdict mean? Um, is it cause to celebrate? What comes next? Uh, I don't know, take it away. <laughs> Rosanna? <laughs> well, I think, you know, for me, um, it, it was, it, I think I shared a lot of the same sentiment a lot of people did with sort of, uh, kind of caught me off guard. You know, I knew how to react with the guilty verdict, with the non-guilty verdict, but I didn't know how to react with a guilty verdict. And the first one just, the first, when I heard the first guilty one, I was like, what, the, what does this mean? And, you know, just started <clears throat> trying to figure out what's, you know, I was all ready to hit the streets with my mask and everything. And then, um, and then the three guilty verdicts. And I was not, I was stunned, but I also started crying. Mm -hmm. And I, I, that emotion really surprised me uh, because it was just, I couldn't control it. Uh, you know, it, 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 it means a lot that finally, you know, uh, a cop is held accountable for, for his actions. And I was thinking back at the Rodney King uh, trial and I thought for sure, I mean, the video showed he was not resisting. The video showed they constantly were just beating him up and yet they were not convicted in any way shape or form mm -hmm. and so uh to me that said we've come we've come a step forward you know because I would imagine that people are they're damn tired no matter what color you are you're damn tired of all of this nonsense especially because now you have video that people have access to video that they can publish they have access to uh, to the public, so you can you can no longer hide the things that many of us have seen throughout our entire lives. So that you know, um, it's a new day. I think it's a new day, and but we have to keep pushing forward. I hope you're right, Rosanna. I, um, it really was a relief to hear the verdict, um, but at the same time. Um, uh, I know the People's World reported that something like 68 people were killed uh, by police um, and over the course of the trial. And just as we were waiting for the verdict um, in the George Floyd uh, case, just a few minutes before the verdict was read, uh, a police officer in Columbus, uh, Ohio, uh, murdered a 15-year-old girl who uh, had a knife. She was in, 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 involved in a fight um, in a kind of sounds like a kind of an overpacked uh, foster home. Um, and instead of uh, trying to um, uh, take the weapon away from her, uh, a police shot her within seconds of arriving on the scene. Um, and 15, uh, I think she's, depending on your report, 15 or 16 years old. Um, and everyone's seen the, the, um, the body cam footage. Right. Um, and I'm sure that he's going to get off because um, he can argue that another person's life was in danger. Um, and uh, and I, in fact, a couple of years ago when Michael, Mike DeWine was the attorney general, I went to some um, meetings about police training and they, I saw uh, one of the police trainers talk and he said, everything was either a good shoot or a bad shoot. And that meant a good shoot was when you were getting away with it. 
and a bad shoot was when you were getting into trouble for it. And everything about that video on this young woman is going to be a good shoot, I'm afraid, and he's going to get away with it. It's just I'm not, I'm not so sure, Anita. I think, uh, you know, I, I really feel that it's a new day. Uh, we just had a, there was just a video released today here, in, uh, I mean, yesterday, where a police officer was punching a woman they were trying to arrest, even though she was already in handcuffs, he immediately was suspended. Okay. And so I think, you know, um, I, I understand it's not going to happen overnight. This, ha this verdict, how many years did it take? You know, decades, if not centuries of, you know, to finally get to this point. But um, I, I, if we continue to keep that pressure, mm -hmm. you know, I don't think that the police, the police will be held much more accountable from this day forward. They can't hide it anymore. We all have cameras. And, and even if they tell us not to videotape or they try to cut, they, they try to cut it off. There's always a way. There's <laughs> all, there's always a way, you know, and, so, and I think the Rodney King began that process of videotaping. You know, back then we didn't have cell phones, but so, some people had those small compact cameras mm -hmm. and that's how he was recorded, and, uh, you know, back then. So it, it kind of was the- And Rodney King was of that. 25 years ago or so? At least, 92, like I think. That, yeah. Oh, 92, okay. I thought, yeah. Um, so this, the amount of, of work that it has taken to achieve what should be a standard, you know, the standard outcome of an incident like that in a democracy is, is staggering. And, and, you know, that I think that's, you know, I agree with Rosanna that, you know, getting the, overcoming the, the inertia in a certain sense and getting the ball, getting the stone moving is, uh, I hope, the, the, the hardest part. And it, it you know, picks up speed after this. Um, but uh, on, you know, on this point of, of accountability and of, you know, our, our right to film the police and everything, um, there's a new law that's been passed in Florida in, in reaction to um, the possibility of, of you know, uh, demonstrations and, and rallies in the uh, the wake of the Derek Chauvin verdict. Um, so in Florida, uh, Ron DeSantis just signed a law that is probably the most draconian um, anti-protest measure in the country. Uh, it provides civil immunity for drivers who uh, run down protesters. Um, mm -hmm. It uh, mandates that, or it creates new felonies and misdemeanors. Um, felonies, for example, for blocking a road during a protest um, or for even participating in a protest that turns violent. So, you know, we know the way that cops uh, act as provocateurs undercover to start things. So if you're in a protest where that happens, you're now, you know, uh, facing felony charges. Mm -hmm. um, it uh, stipulates that uh, people arrested on these charges must be held without bail until their first court appearance. Um, it makes uh, municipalities liable for any damage to property um, if a court deems that they were not proactive enough in, in preventing violence. Mm. Uh, it strips municipalities of the right to um, set their police budgets. Uh, it allows commissioners and state attorneys to appeal any decision about funding of police to the governor's office. Um, I mean, this is just, a, you know, and all of these, these felony convictions, of course, have consequences for voting rights. This is mm -hmm. Florida. Um, mm -hmm. So this is an enormously anti-democratic, enormously destructive uh, bill. Um, how, you know, what's, I don't know, what, what's your, what's your prognosis? What's going to, how is this going to work? What's going to happen? What hope is there? Maybe the I, courts. Uh, oh, go ahead, Rosanna. No, I think that that you know it's just an indication that fascist forces are still alive and and moving in different directions. Mm -hmm. You know, the immediate voting rights uh, restrictions is 
in Georgia, you know, you can't even give water to people who are standing in line. It sounds ridiculous, but it's also an indication that the fascist forces are, you know, testing the waters or testing to see how much people are willing to stand up and, and, and protest against these actions. This is why we can't let up our, 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 um, our voice. Mm -hmm. You know, we continually have to find the different ways, calling senators, calling congressmen, being out in the street, all of it. We have to make sure that we don't just stop anymore. You know, mm -hmm. there are some things that are happening. Uh, uh, for example, you know, when Biden announced the reducing the emissions and some good things, you know, the Recovery Act, thing, there's some good things, but that doesn't mean that we that we need to let up because things seem to be settling down, you know, we're being able to go out more, things like that. No, we have to continue because these fascist forces are attacking us in these different ways. And we have to fight for the courts to, to, uh, to redeem these uh, unlawful and unconstitutional. Mm -hmm. And part, you go for it, yeah. part, part of a um, fascist regime as a police state and I think that's what we're, we're seeing in Florida. And there are similar bills. And I know there's a similar bill in Ohio, which makes me think that it's a kind of a right-wing push across the country um, for, uh, for these kind of bills. Another, another provision that I've heard is that um, you can't even, um, calling a, a police officer a bad name uh, in public is, is outlawed. So, I mean, there's just, it's, really draconian is is the word for it um and i'm sure it's seems to be uh fascist being replicated it's fascist exactly yes and and are we still in a you know you know we often talk about the the idea of a split in the ruling class um uh and we saw that certainly around you know reactions to the trump regime and it's it's pushed toward fascism um what is uh your sense of of how of how that's developing, uh, is it widening, diminishing? Um, what are we What are we looking at? Uh, Interesting question. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow, I have to think about that because, um, yeah, there is. I'm sure there are there are different factions in the ruling class that 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 vie for uh, power. Um, I, I'm not sure where they're where they're at right now. I know Marjorie Taylor Greene is talking about the communist corporations, uh, which is an interesting <laughs> thing. Oh, Everyone, well. you're mind blown. But <laughs> um, so uh, so yeah, the the role that um, uh, some of those big corporations in Georgia took, uh, uh, taking stances against the voter suppression laws. I think I think you know the ruling class that's really in charge of the economy they want <laughs> compliance me. and they want uh, uh, a peace and just people going to work and thinking that's the their natural state and being exploited is you know just part of the natural order of human beings i think the um, the corporate world would would like to be uh, happy with that whereas um, you know kind of the white supremacist uh, strain is is probably serving the ultimate interests of that ruling class and what it does, but it seems to be a faction now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, what you, you know, um, I think they're sort of struggling with what's, what to do next. And they're trying these different, these different things and see what, you know, that, that, that's kind of like their MO. They, they try different things to see what people will rally around. How do you, you know, it's because it's the battle of ideas. And if an idea sticks, then they run with it. Mm -hmm. And so this is why, you know, uh, we can't we can't allow ourselves to stay silent. You know, the other day on Facebook, one of those ads popped up where there's books that are for kids, kids' books that talk about how bad uh, communism is. No. I don't know if others have seen it, but I was, you know, floored by just seeing that. And what I did is I, I deemed it inappropriate oh, and deceptive, good. you know, that it was deceptive advertisement and I didn't want to see it any longer. Mm -hmm. So I think if people see that on Facebook, be sure, because it is deceptive, you know, Absolutely. and, and uh, it's just a, a horrible thing. So now they're, they're starting our children, you know, on that kind of path if, if it sticks. 
you know, uh, I don't know that it will because the working class, I think, is much more advanced in their consciousness mm -hmm. to fall for that so easily anymore. But, you know, if they begin to indoctrinate our children, uh, it's, it's a real problem. I mean, that, that sort of reminds me of something that's happening uh, here right now um, in the city of Binghamton, which is about 45 minutes away from me. Uh, the Binghamton City School District um, put a, uh, a book on um, a sort of suggested reading list or, or on a, a curriculum, I can't remember which. It was a book about um, uh, police brutality, um, but, you know, for done for children in a very age appropriate way. Um, a sort of anti-racist uh, book for children. Well, the um, uh, police, the police department found that extremely offensive and inappropriate. And they wrote to the school and demanded that the book be removed from the curriculum mm. and also demanded a formal apology, uh, which the school board issued. Um, no. and, it's really <laughs> the, and it's, you know, the, the amount of, power that police already have and the amount they are demanding, the amount of immunity and the mm -hmm. amount of um, just leeway that they're demanding is, is insane. Police state is the right word. Right. Um, I, I had a thought on anti-communism too. We have a governor, uh, another local thing. We have governor's uh, race in Ohio. Um, and it seems like the, the, I think there are three candidates so far for uh, the Republican nomination. And they seem to be vying for, with each other on who can be the most anti-communist um, <laughs> one. So I, I, I really look forward to talking about the capitalist agenda in Ohio and how damaging it is to the working class um, and trying to, to meet those, those um, you know, misunderstandings or mis, misinformation about socialism uh, perpetrated by these three candidates. So you're, you're suggesting then that um, these ruling class forces in their anti-communism are, are actually, in a certain sense, opening a door to us, like to- well, that it, that's um, what we got to do. Look okay. for that link to, <laughs> and, for that door. Um, one of the things we published recently on the website was a, a report from the organizing department uh, of the party um, given at the National Committee week, uh, meeting last weekend. And it, um, it deals kind of with the issue of party building um, and the, the internal life of the party, what it looks like. Um, so in the context of these, this intensifying class and democratic struggle, this you know, still dangerous threat of fascism, these uh, laws that are, are criminalizing basic, basically any kind of, you know, political activity, what, um, what does that mean for how communists behave and, and um, how we sort of organize ourselves to, to do our work? Well, I think, I, I think you know, um, we have to be mindful, first of all, that we were raised by capitalists, by capitalist society. And what we want to build is a socialist society that uh, that we have to strive right now to emulate, you know, which means being disciplined about uh, working collectively, being disciplined about really taking care of those things that might get in the way of working collectively, like your ego, like male supremacy, uh, white chauvinism, um, all of those kinds of things, you know. Uh, racism you know sometimes it seeps in and not to get down on yourself but to recognize it and and uh, learn from that experience and change uh, and I think that that's the that's really important and it has to be a self-discipline uh, situation there's nobody going to be you know uh, there with uh, some kind of uh, I don't know what you call it, belt <laughs> or dunce cap or whatever form of punishment, you know. Um, of course, in our party, it, uh, if you do uh, just consistently or not consistently, but if you 
display some of those things. You know, we we do we do um, address it, but we don't immediately, you know, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, suspend or mm -hmm. unless it's pretty severe. But you know, we we try to you know we we try to help each other overcome some of these flaws, some of these human flaws that that uh, capitalism has um, instilled in us. Exactly. And you know, we are all we are all working class people, and I think sometimes maybe we forget that we we're communists, but we're also come from the working class. Mm -hmm. So you know, we're we're good people. We're good people. <laughs> exactly. Overall. <laughs> And I think how we comport ourselves is we, if we have the chance, we should be loud and proud to be communist party members. Yep. Um, it's a great party. It's, um, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, socialism is, should not be a dirty word. It, it's a, a, a system that really addresses human needs and is much more humanitarian than what we have uh, today. So, um, so I think I'd, I'd, I'd like to see us have even more of a public presence uh, going forward. All right. Well, uh, Anita, I think that's the that's the last word. word. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, thank you, um, Anita and Rosana. Thank you, comrades. And we will thank see you, you next Scott. week. Thanks, Scott. Bye, Rosana. Bye, everybody. Take care. Bye-bye.